So in this video I will include words here um, and above to uh, illustrate what I mean. In this video we're going to be looking at words which include collusion. That's uh, collusion. Not an English word, but English uses Latin particles. Actually, in Latin there are prepositions. Uh, since they're written separately from the stem or word um, that are prefixed to a given lexical item, whether it be a noun, pronoun, adjective, verb, etc. To modify or underline meaning. Um, English has such particles merged with the stem to form compounds. So we have include, exclude, conclude, seclude, we're going to look at all of those preclude, but they're not, but clued and collusion are not standalone words, even though we may have these in our lexicon. So interesting uh, that clued, though it isn't considered a word, it's stressed rather than the affix that comes before it. Some linguists will claim that affixing a Latin particle before occlusion does not grant us its being called a prefix, let alone a preposition, on the grounds that clued and inclusion uh, are not standalone English words. But I say they're just fiddling with their tassels. I mean, who is to say that there might not be at some point grounds to call something a clusion uh, that could clude? something or someone, um, even if this be uh, used in you know jargon. It would seem that we cannot preclude reasons for giving a lexical item a definition despite it not being considered an English word when divorced from its preposition or prefix, at least not without closer examination of the etymology of the word. Why preclude that clued and clusion not be a word? until we were given a definition of you know of of its own for starts clued comes from latin claudere it sounds ominously like cloud to me claudere now any item taken out of a specific context out of the blue planet we are on uh, becomes severed from its root but when the context, um, when in context, uh, like biology, geology, meteorology, uh, climatology, and even maybe architecture, um, origins are unveiled and the cloud is lifted. So, include from claudere plus en prefix, which means to make. So, literally, make clouded. Um, actually, in the 15th century, it meant to materially enclose, shut in, imprison, confine someone or something. Sounds to me very befitting of um, beclouding someone. So, cloud in itself carries figurative meanings as early as the 13th century, but we'll get to that later. An inclusion is a solid fragment, liquid globule, or pocket of gas enclosed in a mineral or rock. An occlusion, in medical terms, is a complete or partial blockage of a blood vessel. Ah, so cloud is related to clot, after all. But it is also the inclusion or sorption of gas that is trapped during the solidification of a material. And so sorption is a word because it's being used in jargon um, and relates to absorption and adsorption. Unlike clued, uh, which does not, as of yet, uh, mean anything specific. At least there's no ap apparent cloud there. 
In any case, occlusion in climatology is the front, hmm, front, formed by a cold front overtaking a warm front and lifting the warm air above the Earth's surface, where clouds are formed, I believe. Uh, here the prefix oc means, um, in Latin, ob, in the way, as in an obstruction, um, as in obstruction, or the oc in occult, or the that which is hidden or obscured from the cult or general public. Now, in Middle English, sky originally meant cloud. The figurative sense of cloud is said to begin in the 13th century, and by the 1640s, in the clouds meant removed from earthly things, obscure but also fanciful or unreal. Today, someone who is said to have their head in the clouds is distracted or removed from reality, whatever that means. Unless perhaps you're on cloud nine. And if you're under a cloud, you've been reproached or held for suspicious. If not in a state of gloom or bad temper, that is. I think I'm more on cloud nine. Back to occlusion. In the film from 2001 called Kate and uh, Leopold, Leopold's time travel to the 21st century um, causes a widespread occlusion of elevators, as is written in the synops synopsis, and may cause a disappearance of the character Stuart himself um, if Leopold does not return on a Monday in 1876. Hmm, time travel. If only I could time travel to see how words were actually used. Today, what we have is one etymological dictionary uh, called Etym Online um, that's free, available for free. And the other is uh, the Oxford, um, you know, more comprehensive one, which you need a a paid subscription and is not my particular fancy uh, but what choices are there other than those two I don't know let me know in the comments if you find a more comprehensive and coherent dictionary of etymology please uh, the ones that are not you know completely severing um, context and history. To close, which sounds, or conclude, uh, clothes sounds like clothes? Coincidence. Hmm. I ask myself, um, who is precluding or actively excluding uh, just how much more, how much more words are connected than we are being told by academy, academies uh, who tell us that the scientific method uh, precludes us from jumping to conclusions or uh, to come to a con conclusion uh, prematurely uh, without sufficient evidence. Well, is the evidence not in the sounds themselves, the phonos themes of words, which evidently more often than not, um, though I'm not basing my assumption on majority rule fallacy either, um, have become morphed and distorted through misunderstandings, mishearings, misnomers in time. It'd be interesting to do a study on just how many words have been misunderstood, mistaken, misrepresented. Could we not safely say safely without getting into trouble, uh, that there are really fewer words than are led to, to, we are led to believe by so-called scholars in their, you know, colors and colors uh, in schools. Is our education system, which has become dangerously standardized world, worldwide, like having one etymology dictionary, for example, uh, secluding the masses from actually coming to terms with language. Let me know what you think in the comments. 
Is it not being boxed in, rather than concessioned, restricted, and given false terminology like, you know, perfect, present perfect, continuous? See my last videos on that. And falsely analyzed and made vague or taken amiss. Hmm. Seclusion. To seclude, to remove from a contact, uh, from contact with others, to shut off or screen from view. Exclusion, to exclude, eject, reject, forcibly expel, debar as a form of punishment. Exclusion, an act or instance of excluding, the state of being excluded. <clears throat> I ask myself. What contexts would have led to the creation of such words? How did such words as exclude and seclude, not to mention repudiate, even come about without dismissing certain conspiracies? Moreover, is it a, cons is it a coincidence that seem to, re to all relate to clouding, whether that's literal or figurative? is another question we won't get in we won't delve into that right here but uh, there are many who can who've already made videos on that if so uh, why uh, why would these not be related to geology uh, meteorology climatology if not sectarianism by masons who those whose cults uh, build walls between themselves and the public um, and uh, what about colonists and religionists, theologists, linguists, uh, an elite who keep the masses in the dark about the dark and the light? What would it take for so-called scholars who profess themselves scientists to concede or admit defeat that by having professed They've taken a vow to keep the masses from ever coming to grasp the intrinsics, meaning phono-semantics, uh, behind defined sets of phonemes, since it has also been concluded that there are no fewer than 205 cognitive fallacies we may fall into, um, you know, the dangers there, um, which actually that, that many fallacies which comes from phallax, uh, but wait, does it not sound obfusely like the French falaise? Hmm, phallax. Though etymologies will say it comes from phallas. Uh, but what is a cliff but another type of wall? Hmm, from a slightly different perspective. This only goes to say that the likelihood of anyone ever coming to actually apply a scientific method, due to the fact there are 205 fallacies um, that we come across daily, for language at least, and is so slight and barricaded. Con. Con is said to be an intensive prefix, as it amplifies the stem meaning sedere. So, concede, for example, comes from that. Or you might consider. So, to grant, to give away. Well, excellentissimus <coughs> is pro an intensive prefix to a certain hat that grads and professors wear. Is that why it's called profess? Fess, a.k.a mortarboard or trencher hmm are they digging a trench or is it from old french fess meaning fascist anyhow they're now equipped with a hawk or battle axe is that the fess point if students get an e mark have they been stabbed by the munition. Let's have a look at that.
Hmm. There's the shield and the E right in the middle. We fear that. We fear getting an E. So as grammar is largely divorced from emotion and context, so too is etymology distanced from real human history and contexts. And we battle to find meaningful connections because we're faced with walls and cliffs. Thanks for watching.